You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you uh, got at least the beginning of somewhat of an education yesterday. And uh, we shall carry on where we left off and attempt to let you know who is doing all of these things to destroy this country. All these years, we've been looking around trying to find the enemy. We never could because the enemy is our mother, our father, our uncle, aunt, brother, sister, grandmother, grandfather, cousins. And so we never looked at home. <laughs> that couldn't be Americans doing this to America. I mean, you know, why would they do it? Well, it is Americans doing it to America and uh, you got a little bit of why they're doing it yesterday, and I'll try to impart quite a bit more to you this evening. It's important that you know these things. Make sure that you have pen and paper by your side and that you are prepared to take notes. And I'll be right back after this very short pause. Having a hard time finding your favorite show on shortwave or satellite? The Christian Media Newspaper now provides program guides to all the top Christian, patriot, and alternative radio programs. Four times a year, they print an updated shortwave and satellite program guide. Christian Media is $20 per year and includes news and interviews on Christian books, video, music, and broadcasting. Subscribe now and receive a free Christian Music Compact Disc with your paid order. To subscribe to Christian Media or receive more information, call 520-333-4578. Once again, to subscribe to Christian Media or receive more information, call 520-333-4578. That's 520-333-4578. Call now.
That's a uh, fitting introduction to the beginning of today's broadcast. Alice A. Bailey is well known to anyone who has even only a slight knowledge of what's known as the New Age movement. She has been called the New Age Queen. Indeed, she is the key figure of this century in disclosing details of the plan to institute on earth the rule of the so-called Masters of Wisdom. Details of this plan were unveiled to Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, or at least she claims the details were revealed to her. She wrote Isis Unveiled and the Secret Doctrine in the latter part of the last century. Helena Blavatsky, or HPB as she's called for short, for obvious reasons, also founded the Theosophical Society. I remember once calling one of the uh, the big names in the ufologist movement, and uh, I asked him what was really behind all of this stuff, and he told me to study theosophy. Well, at that particular time, I had no idea what he meant, but after years of research, <laughs> I do now. These books were supposedly transmitted to Blavatsky by mental telepathy from one of the masters of wisdom, or one of the council of wise men of the great white brotherhood, as she called it. A Dwaj Kool, spelled K-H-U-L, or D-K for short, this is the same Dwaj Kool, masquerading as a master who gave Alice A. Bailey her revelations in this century. And I'm going to tell you quite a bit more about Helena Petrovna Blavatsky and Dwaj Kool as we go along here. Well, maybe not quite a bit more, but at least a little bit more. As the recipient of Dwaj Kool's telepathic transmissions in the first half of this century, Alice Bailey wrote a whole lot of books on a variety of occult topics relating to the unfolding of the plan. A key part of this plan calls for establishing a new world religion, which is to be based on the mystery religions of ancient Babylon, Egypt, Greece, Rome, and other pagan nations of the past. Alice A. Bailey explains for us their origin and significance when she says, and I quote, 
These ancient mysteries were originally given to humanity by the hierarchy and were, in their turn, received by the hierarchy from the Great White Lodge on Sirius. They contain the clue to the evolutionary process, hidden in number and words. They veil the secret of man's origin and destiny. That's from Alice A. Bailey, The Rays and the Initiations, New York, Lucis Publishing Company, 1955, page 330. And uh, can also be found in a compilation of selections from her works called Ponder on This, New York, Lucis Publishing Company, 1980, page 15. Now, we're going to look at the New Age concepts of the hierarchy. And yes, you read it right, a Masonic Lodge on the star Sirius. <laughs> and when you peruse the references that I give you, you're going to read an awful lot of this stuff. But let's get a better understanding of something that's going to play a major role in the coming New Age world religion. The mysteries, or mystery religions. I've covered it extensively on this broadcast, hours and hours and hours and hours. And I've given you extensive bibliographies, and I'm going to give you more. Mystery religions are defined by the New Columbia Encyclopedia, 4th edition, as, quote, in Greek and Roman religion, some important secret cults. Although the mystic rites were kept secret, it was known that they required elaborate initiations, including accepting occult knowledge and acting out a sacred drama. Since the mystery deities were associated primarily with fertility, many scholars believe that these cults were based on unrecorded primitive fertility rites. End quote. Now, of course... Lucifer's true goal regarding what Bailey has hinted at is man's destiny, of course, according to the Bible, is to enslave him in his one world religion and his visible or externalized kingdom on the earth, which will restore to mankind these mysteries, including their sacred drama. To some people... Talking about Satan as if he actually existed is a sign of mental retardation. And I have to tell you that these people who believe these things do not believe in Satan. They do not believe in a devil. They do not believe in a real being called Lucifer, nor do they believe in a God called Jehovah or Adonai or anything else. The whole key to the understanding of all of this lies in your knowledge that they believe these things to be metaphors for an evolutionary process which gave man intellect, through the use of which man will become God. They believe that there is some great power in the universe that connects all things, but it is not God. They call it the great architect of the universe. But you have to understand that their conception is that this is an architect. An architect does not create anything. An architect takes what is created and builds with it. That should give you a little better understanding of some of this. They believe that religion created the concept of gods and angels and Satans and devils and Lucifers and all of these other things, and that these religions, using these dogmas and teachings, have persecuted man and have prevented the use of his intellect and has, in fact, hindered the ultimate destiny of the perfection of the human race and the apotheosis of mankind. Now, I know that some of this is going over some of your heads. But if you just stick with me, it may become clear to you. New Agers who write about visitors from space and Masonic lodges on Sirius, ladies and gentlemen, are not psychos, but are among some of the world's elite, most well-educated people. 
People such as H.G. Wells, Buckminster Fuller, Norman Cousins, Dr. Carlos Romulo, Theodore M. Hesburgh, John Denver, Robert Heilbrunner, Alvin Toffler, Mohandas Gandhi, Yu Thant, Robert Mueller, and of course, we discussed yesterday, Shirley MacLaine. And there are many, many, many more. If you watch Robert Schuler on television on Sunday morning at the Crystal Cathedral, you call yourself a Christian, you might be surprised to know that he is a New Age minister. And he very seldom practices or teaches what is known as Christianity. And of course, if you're not a Christian, you probably watched his uh, performance and wondered what that was all about. These people are not exactly street people. Some of them are terribly influential and very rich. Why are they involved in all of this? Their strange beliefs put them in agreement with hundreds of millions of others in the New Age and in the some of the Eastern religions of the world. They believe that man is about to experience a new step in evolution as a new higher life form. He will need a new religious system in which to express this next stage on his way to godhood. And to accomplish this, Eastern and Western religions are converging. All these ecumenical councils and getting together of the different denominations and major religions of the world are blending them closer together until eventually there will only be one world religion. And you will either fit into that world religion or you will simply be eliminated. They believe that a synthesis of all of these religions is just over the horizon. And this new religion will be based on the mysticism of the great Eastern religions as practiced in the temples without windows, the mystery schools. But ladies and gentlemen, don't misunderstand. New Agers are not the only ones promoting this concept. So are literally all of the major so-called fraternal lodges of the world, the secret societies. Large foundations, such as the Carnegie Foundation, the Ford Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation. Henry Clausen, the former sovereign grand commander of the Supreme Council, 33rd degree, which is the mother council of world Freemasonry, is one who has also proclaimed this idea. In Emergence of the Mystical, written while he was the highest Mason in the land, he talks about the coming New Age and its relationship with the mysticism of Eastern religions. And he states, quote, Today we are at the threshold of a new era. All signs point to this fact. We look toward a transformation into a new age, using, however, the insight and wisdom of the ancient mystics. This new worldview is emerging because there has been a recent correlation between modern physics and the mysticism of Eastern religions. And that's from Henry C. Clausen, Emergence of the Mystical, the Supreme Council, 33rd Degree, Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, Southern Jurisdiction, 1981, page 19. So before we continue, since this is such an important part of his uh, dogma and, and of this whole phenomenon altogether, let's make sure that you understand exactly what this term mysticism means. 
And according to the New Columbian Encyclopedia, mysticism is, quote, the practice of magic, occultism, or the esoteric. Included in the mystic tradition were the hermetic philosophers and the alchemists, end quote. A mystic is, quote, one who practices mysticism, in effect, magic, occultism, witchcraft, end quote. Now, don't get hung up on all of these things, because I'm going to tell you that what you believe that these words mean is not necessarily their meaning at all. For instance, magic is the art of illusion. Plain and simple. It's as clear as that. Magic is the art of illusion. Occultism has the same meaning as esoteric. It means hidden or concealed. Something that is hidden or concealed is not necessarily bad or evil or satanic. It is simply hidden or concealed. So make sure you understand the meaning of the words. Most times, things are hidden from other people because there is something wrong there. There is a lie or a deception. Or maybe it is bad or evil. Things which are not repugnant to the neighbors of the person or persons hiding these things are not, as a rule, ever hidden. Therefore, because of the proliferation of bad things that are kept from the eye of the public in these occult or esoteric rites, writings, ceremonies, rituals, and lodges, these words have taken on the popular conception that they are in some way evil. But let me tell you this again. Magic simply means the art of illusion. Occultism or the esoteric both mean hidden or concealed. If something is occult, it is hidden from the everyday, normal society that goes on around it. The same with esoteric. Esoteric means within or hidden underneath. Now let's go back and look at Clausen's statement again. And perhaps now with a little more enlightenment. Keep these definitions in mind. You'll encounter them constantly in New Age and Masonic writings. It's not surprising, folks, to find high initiates, the princes and adepts of Freemasonry, promoting New Age ideas. Indeed, New Age authorities refer frequently to Freemasonry and its role down through the centuries in preserving the occult mystery religions of ancient days, and so do the leaders of Freemasonry. In fact, the New Age and the New Age movement, ladies and gentlemen, came from the mysteries directly. It is what you might call an old-time religion. And the revival of it is, of course, being touted as a religion for a new age, but it has an old familiar ring, or should we say smell, to it, as in New World Odor. <laughs> The New Age, in fact, is not new at all. What is happening now and what is rearing its head as the New Age movement is nothing more or less than the exact same occult practices that reared its head in the 1930s during the Nazi Party's rise to power. In fact, they were responsible for that emergence of that particular New Age. And Hitler spoke of it quite often. It is, in fact, ladies and gentlemen, as old as humanity itself. Some might say as old as the Garden of Eden, where Satan brought about the fall of man. Now, remember, they believe that this is a metaphor. It flowered at Babylon, bloomed in Egypt with the sun god, Osiris and the moon goddess Isis, and it is alive today 
in the Hindu religion, other Eastern religions, and Western religions such as unity, Christian science, Unitarianism, New Thought, Spiritualism, and Mormonism. It also lives on in the lodges, dogma, and rites of Freemasonry, and the other fraternal orders and secret societies. Now, make no mistake about this. I am not making judgments on any of this. I am a true constitutionist. I believe that you have the right to worship at the altar of the cho your choice, the God of your choice, in this country, and for us all to have that freedom and not be persecuted because of our religion or any other one of a myriad of things in our personal lives, I'm willing to fight for that right. What I don't like about all of this, ladies and gentlemen, and the reason that I must reveal it and expose it, are the lies and deceptions that accompany it, that are destroying the very best things that humanity has ever wrought upon this earth and the ultimate achievement of all of mankind, which was granting to the common man and woman freedom. The right to be a king and queen upon their own property. And until this nation was created, that had never happened before in the history of the entire world. So this is a ministry, to be sure, but it is a ministry of freedom, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm sure that very few Masons have realized that they were being initiated into an organization which, in spite of its recent public relations pronouncements to the contrary, considers itself the present-day embodiment of these mystery religions. But that this is the case is attested to by numerous New Agers and Masonic scholars, including Alice A. Bailey's husband, Foster, a 33rd degree Freemason. And I have literally collected hundreds and hundreds of statements of writings in their own words, admitting. And I quote, Masonry is the descendant of, or is founded upon, a divinely imparted religion which long antedates the prime date of creation as given in our Bible. It is all that remains to us of the first world religion, which flourished in an antiquity so old that it is impossible to affix a date. It was the first unified world religion. To this, such symbols as the pyramids, both in Egypt and South America, bear witness. The ancient mysteries were temporary custodians of the ancient truth and closely allied to the Masonic work of today. The relation of the mysteries to Masonry has oft been recognized, and the golden thread of living continuity can be traced through them to modern Masonry. The mysteries are all parts of that ancient thread which has its origin in that primeval religion which terminates today in Freemasonry. That's from Foster Bailey, The Spirit of Masonry, Kent, England, Lucis Press, Limited, 1957, pages 30 through 32. Masonry is regarded as the direct descendant or as a survival of the mysteries of Isis and Osiris in Egypt. That's from Robert Freck Gould, History of Freemasonry, New York, 1884. Page 1, line 13. Quote, The signs, symbols, and inscriptions date from the Sumerian civilizations, Chaldea, Babylon, Assyria, Greece, Rome, and even in Mexico and Yucatan. Some rites of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry of our mother jurisdiction have been taught in their esoteric rites. Henry C. Clausen, Messages for a Mission, the Supreme Council, 33rd Degree, Ancient and Accepted Freemasons, Mother Jurisdiction of the World, 1971, pages 5 through 7. Note that Clausen, I'm sorry, it's page 5, or excuse me, chapter 5, page 7. Note that Clausen, when he was the highest Mason in the land, stated unequivocally 
that, quote, we teach the same grand truths, the same sublime philosophies, as those adepts of the ancient mysteries taught in their esoteric rites, end quote. The New Age movement and Freemasonry are the major vehicles Lucifer is using to bring about his externalized kingdom on earth, which will be a revival of the mystery religions of Babylon and other ancient nations. These occult doctrines of mystery of Babylon can be traced back, ladies and gentlemen, to the period after the flood when Babylon's first king Nimrod and his queen Semiramis established the mystery religion that spread into Persia, Egypt, Greece, and other nations, which set up secret brotherhoods of initiated magicians and priests. They worshipped the sun and the moon as the universal principles of generation, and that is a metaphor. To the profane, they worshipped the sun and the moon. That's not the real meaning of those at all. The sun, in the esoteric realization, was the male or active principle, in effect, the doctrine. And the moon, the female, or passive principle, in effect, the church. And these were symbolized by the sexual organs of the male and female and their sexual union. This pagan phallic worship was central to the universal religion practiced by virtually all mankind in ancient days and indeed is practiced today. Go to any cemetery, ladies and gentlemen, you will see obelisks erected as tombstones on many of the grave sites. These are representations of the phallus. They represent the generative force, the force of the energy of the sun, the symbol of God's magnificence and power in the universe. As part of the initiation rites for their temple worship, all these nations celebrated a common mystery drama, perhaps with different names and stories, but with a similar plot. And we're going to take a look at those. In just a moment. Having a hard time finding your favorite show on shortwave or satellite? The Christian Media Newspaper now provides program guides to all the top Christian, patriot, and alternative radio programs. Four times a year, they print an updated shortwave and satellite program guide. Christian Media is only $20 a year and includes news and interviews on Christian books, video, music, and broadcasting. Subscribe now and receive a free Christian Music Compact Disc with your paid order. To subscribe to Christian Media or receive more information, call 520-333-4578. Once again, to subscribe to Christian Media or receive more information, call 520-333-4578. That's 520 520- Three 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 four five seven eight. Call now.
Having a hard time finding your favorite show on shortwave or satellite? The Christian Media Newspaper now provides program guides to all the top Christian, patriot, and alternative radio programs. Four times a year, they print an updated shortwave and satellite program guide. Christian Media is $20 per year and includes news and interviews on Christian books, video, music, and broadcasting. Subscribe now and receive a free Christian Music Compact Disc with your paid order. To subscribe to Christian Media or receive more information, call 520-333-4578. Once again, to subscribe to Christian Media or receive more information, call 520-333-4578. That's 520-333-4578. Call now. Well, that uh, strange noise you hear is the uh, <laughs> is the large CD disc changer trying to shift into low gear. These initiation rites, ladies and gentlemen, are important. The drama told about the death of an individual who in the beginning represented the sun. At the hands of three ruffians, the three winter months, the cutting into parts of the body and the dispersion of these body parts, the search by the wife representing the moon, who found all the parts except the phallus, her substituting a wooden phallus for the lost one, and his, the sun's resurrection at the vernal equinox. This story, called the Osirian Cycle, or by some the Isis legend, was part of the general religion practiced by mankind in ancient days, a pagan nature religion. It was literally the worship of the seasonal changes by which man made his living. And the priests who could predict the times to till the soil, to plant the seeds, to make the harvest, and were accurate in their predictions, became the most powerful men in the realm. And so they created a religion around the four cycles of the seasons. To the profane, or the common man, it was the worship of the sun, moon, and the starry sky. According to the highest Masonic authorities, this is the same story preserved down to this day in the symbols and rites of Freemasonry, but it has taken a turn as far as its exoteric meaning. The plot of the Masonic version is part of the initiation ceremony for the third or Master Mason degree. It involves the supposed death of Hiram Abiff, who is said to have built Solomon's temple, at the hands of three ruffians, a search for his body, the loss of a secret word and the substitution of a new word for the lost one. This new word is an amalgamation of the names of three sun gods and thus relates to the active or male principle, in effect the phallus. And at the climax of the drama, Hiram is resurrected to new life when he is raised by the master of the lodge with the grip of the lion's paw. Now the New Age movement seeks to restore to all mankind this mystery play along with the process of initiation, initiation into a new age, a Luciferic initiation, which will, they say, take place in Masonic temples as part of the New Age world religion, which of course they believe will restore the ancient mysteries. And today, according to Freemasonry's most distinguished authorities, the occult secrets of these mystery religions are embedded in the symbols and rites of Freemasonry. If this is true, it follows that Freemasonry itself 
must be a religion. And if Freemasonry is a religion, just what kind of religion is it? Well, chief among Freemasonry's distinguished authorities, as I have already disclosed to you, was Albert Pike. Before looking at what Pike said about this, we should point out that despite what Masonic leaders claim today, that Pike is just one of many Masonic writers of the past and deserves no special attention, the truth is that Pike was and still is Scottish Rite Masonry's highest authority. The word authority is based on the word author, and Pike is the one who authored the Scottish Rite as practiced today. And indeed, they don't even heed what they say. They claim Pike is just one of many Masonic writers of the past and deserves no special attention, yet he is the only Freemason who has ever rated the highest honor of being entombed in the house of the Temple of the 33rd Degree of the Supreme Council of the 33rd Degree in Washington, D.C., just like V.I. Lennon was entombed in the walls of the Kremlin. And just like V.I. Lennon wasn't anybody important, just one of a few Russian writers of the past that deserves no special attention. Pike is right up there with Lennon. <laughs> oh, they don't like me at all. That's why President Clinton called me the most dangerous radio host in America. I'm not afraid of anyone, not afraid of anything, and I'll tell you the truth whether you want to hear it or not. And the truth is the most dangerous weapon to people who live in lies that can ever be wielded against them. They would much rather get rid of the truth than something called an assault weapon. Joseph Fort Newton, one of this century's most noted Masonic authorities, in his book called The Builders, captions a full-page picture of Pike with these words, and I quote, Sovereign Grand Commander of the Supreme Council, 33rd Degree, Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite, Southern Jurisdiction, United States of America, from 1859 to his death in 1891. He recast the old Scottish Rite rituals and brought them to their present state of beauty and perfection. Joseph Fort Newton, The Builders, Richmond, Virginia, McCoy Publishing and Supply Company, Incorporated, 1944, page 16a. Note that he states Pike brought the rituals to their present state of perfection. In addition, Pike was an honorary member of virtually every single Grand Lodge on earth. He is the only Masonic authority to be given the honor of being entombed in the House of the Temple in Washington, D.C. Manley P. Hall, in his book, Lectures on Ancient Philosophy, quotes another high-ranking Mason who eulogized Pike. And he said this, and I quote, To Pike the following remarkable tribute was paid by Sterling Kerr, Jr., 33rd degree, deputy for the inspector general for the District of Columbia, upon crowning with laurel the bust of Pike in the house of the temple. Pike was an oracle greater than that of Delphi. He was truth's minister and priest. His victories were those of peace. Long may his memory live in the hearts of the brethren." End quote. His victories were those of peace. Albert Pike was a confederate general ladies and gentlemen. Hall then adds some high praise of his own, stating that Pike was single-handedly responsible for making Freemasonry the most powerful organization in America. Now, listen to what I just said, ladies and gentlemen, regardless of who or what you always thought wielded the most power. Listen to what he said. Pike was single-handedly responsible for making Freemasonry the most powerful organization in America. Quote, Affectionately termed Albertus Magnus by his admirers, Pike wrote of Hermeticism and alchemy and hinted at the mysteries of the temple. Through his zeal and unflagging energy, American Freemasonry was raised from comparative obscurity to become the most powerful organization in the land, end quote. Hall, page 414. 
So much for the claim that Albert Pike's works are not really authoritative. I'll state it again. Pike is the authority on the Scottish Rite. He's the one who wrote it. He created it in its modern form. He also wrote the book containing the philosophy which underlies the Scottish Rite, which I advised you to pick up and read yesterday, called Morals and Dogma. So what did Albert Pike say about masonry as a religion? Well, this is an important question. Since we are saying that Freemasonry is to be at the core of the New Age world religion, it's obvious that Freemasonry itself must be clearly seen to be a religion. But the claim is being made repeatedly today by the 33rd degree council that Freemasonry is not a religion. But ladies and gentlemen, how could we expect to get the truth about these matters from any Freemasonry? For every Freemason has sworn upon penalty of his own death never to reveal the secrets of the order to anyone who is not entitled to them. They cannot and will not tell us the truth ever. I don't know how many people I have spoken to after having done a broadcast referencing their works in their own words some poor soul calling me on the phone or walking up to me somewhere and saying, Bill, you must be wrong because I know my uncle and he would never lie to me and he told me that what you said is not true. Ah, but Sally, you see, you missed the whole point. I didn't say it. They did. I quoted them in their own words from their own work. Oh, but my uncle would never lie to me. You must be mistaken. These must have been people who hated Freemasonry who wrote those books. No, Sally, they were the greatest Freemasons who ever lived who are acknowledged by Freemasonry as being the preeminent philosophers of their time. What Sally never has understood, and what all of you listening will probably never understand, is that no matter how much you love your Uncle Bob, or your Aunt Susie, or your mother, or your father, your brother, your sister, your aunts, uncles, cousins, grandmothers, grandfathers, who are members of these secret orders, and no matter how kind and gentle and wonderful they have been to you, they cannot and will not tell you the truth because they are sworn upon pain of their own death never to reveal the secrets of the order to anyone who is not a member. They very simply lie to you because their philosophy is, as you will learn later as we continue through this, their philosophy is, if you are not one of us, you are nothing. In their oaths, well, let me save that for when we get to those oaths, and we will sometime next week. For I'm going to run out of time today, but we're going to continue this until I'm finished with it, until I'm satisfied that you who are listening at this point in time understand it. You see, I've covered all this before. Many times in the hour of the time. But we are constantly gaining new members. And so every couple of years I have to do this all over again. And it doesn't help. If you're not paying attention. <laughs> so I hope that you are. Most Freemasons, ladies and gentlemen, will loudly deny their brotherhood as a religion. This is especially true of Freemasons who profess to be Christians. To settle the question, let's look at what Masonry's highest authorities state about this issue. In Morals and Dogma of the Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, Grand Commander and Prince Adept Albert Pike clearly identifies Freemasonry as an occult religion the universal religion of all mankind since the beginning of time. He says, quote, Every Masonic Lodge is a temple of religion, and its teachings are instructions in religion, end quote. 
Now, before looking at what else Pike had to say about Freemasonry as a religion, let's establish the authority of another of these men, Albert G. Mackey. Some Masons respond with something like, well, that's just their opinion anyway. I never heard of these guys before. If they didn't, i got to say that they haven't been in the Lodge very much since their initiation. I heard uh, Ed Decker on a radio show one time being interviewed. And he got a lot of calls from a lot of Freemasons. One of them wanted to know where he got the information that he was quoting. Well, Ed Decker told them from Albert G. Mackey and Albert Pike and asked him if he'd ever heard of them. Well, the caller said that he thought he'd heard of Mackey but didn't recognize Pike's name at all. So... After Decker mentioned that Pike had written Morals and Dogma, this guy suddenly remembered that he had the book. But, but he said it was put away somewhere. And uh, it'd take a year to read that thing, he said. Another Mason called Decker on the same radio show and said that he was probably the only man alive who had read Pike through twice. And I was listening, and I could have refuted him because I've read it many times. And every time I read it, I learn something new. But there was a time in the history of Freemasonry when every person being initiated in the Lodge was given a copy of Morals and Dogma by Albert Pike. And it is probably the easiest Masonic work to obtain by anyone that has ever been written because so many of them were published. These two Masonic writers, Pike and Mackey, over the past 100 years, have been the major authorities recognized worldwide by Freemasonry. However, today, ladies and gentlemen, many rank-and-file Masons say they've never heard of Albert Pike or Albert G. Mackey, which tells me that they've never ventured even close to the library of their local lodge, because they'll find that most of the works contained therein were written by these two people. The typical Mason, if he reads any Masonic materials at all, gets much of his information about Masonry from a section in his Masonic Bible containing questions and answers on Masonry, and that's as far as many of them ever go. And these typical Freemasons, usually of the Blue Lodge, never bother looking further into what the organization believes in the more esoteric areas because, quite frankly, they're not even interested. They could care less. In fact, the introduction to the section of the Masonic Bible called Questions and Answers, 160 questions and answers, pertaining to the symbolism of Masonry and its connections with the Bible, states, quote, the following questions and answers are intended to convey to the average Mason the information every Mason desires without taking the time to do the research, end quote. The interesting point here, ladies and gentlemen, is that according to the credit line, which is part of the title of the section of the Masonic Bible where this appears, the source for this information is a name most Masons claim they've never heard of. It reads, quote, compiled from the works of Albert G. Mackey, end quote. So these Average Masons who say they've never heard of Mackey, but who accept this section of the Masonic Bible as authoritative, do not even realize that this authority is based primarily on the authority of Albert Mackey. And that brings us to the end of this hour. We will continue this on Monday, ladies and gentlemen. So don't fail to be here at the appointed time when... Uh, I will take my place at the lectern, and you will take your place at your appointed desk, wherever that may be, with pen and paper in hand. And we shall continue your education into the esoteric truths of the hidden brotherhood in your midst, I might add. Good night, and God bless each 
and every single one of you. Having a hard time finding your favorite show on shortwave or satellite? The Christian Media Newspaper now provides program guides to all the top Christian, patriot, and alternative radio programs. Four times a year, they print an updated shortwave and satellite program guide. Christian Media is only $20 a year and includes news and interviews on Christian books, video, music, and broadcasting. Subscribe now and receive a free Christian Music Compact Disc with your paid order. To subscribe to Christian Media or receive more information, call 520-333-4578. Once again, to subscribe to Christian Media or receive more information, call 520-333-4578. That's 520-333-4578. Call now. 